Marcus Conti reporting a little update on the Gilroy Garlic Festival shooter, the garlic guy, garlic man. So we have a uh, we have a suspect. We have a uh, a news a news briefing. Santino William Leggin. Santino William Leggin. And uh, I'll give you a shot of this guy. Here he is. Here's the, the thumbnail. Pow! There he is. Uh, so, so this is the guy. This is the kid that shot him. Um, three officers gunned him down with uh, handguns. They're saying uh, he killed three people. There's a, a six-year-old, six-year-old male, a 13-year-old female, and I believe a 23-year-old used an assault rifle. There were 80 to a, uh, 80, uh, 80,000 to 100,000 guests at the. Um, at the at the uh, festival, and he purchased a gun legally in Nevada, July nine, recently an SKS assault type rifle. I don't know what that is. I'm sure, people know in the audience know what that is. Guys, fucking follow guns. So here's the here's the press release, the press conference. <laughs> So I'll reiterate um, what I said at the press conference last night, and I've got a few additional details, and then we'll also be planning an additional update, because uh, I plan on having more information uh, now that daylight's here and we're getting fresh resources in. Uh, so we'll try to put something together for you for later this afternoon. Uh, We've got the date and time established already, and, and as most of you know, the Gilroy Garlic Festival is an event that we put on every year, uh, and we typically host between 80 and 100,000 people uh, to our festival. It takes several thousand people a day volunteering to make this festival work. Uh, and so at the time that the incident occurred you know it was near the end of the final day it was last night sunday uh questions that were asked you know regarding the security and and the way that we manage and monitor it from a law enforcement and public safety perspective is that we have police personnel on site the entire time of the festival we actually create a police compound where we have a command center uh, a booking area, you know, all the things that you would need to uh, run a major operation like this. The officers are deployed throughout the park and they're assigned to different regions of the park, so they're spread out. We don't have officers all in one spot. Uh, when this call came in, the uh, shots being fired, uh, the closest team of officers responded immediately. Uh, they were there and engaging the suspect in less than a minute. Um, the suspect was armed with an assault-type rifle, and he, as soon as he saw the officers, he engaged the officers and fired at the officers with that rifle. Uh, and I had three officers that engaged the suspect. Uh, and despite the fact that they were outgunned with their handguns against a rifle, uh, those three officers were able to fatally wound that suspect, and uh, the event ended very quickly. Of course, then we had the aftermath of dealing with the uh, victims and in the EMS side of things. We put out a call for help. We had over 20 agencies, um, federal, state, county, and local agencies uh, from all over that responded people down into our park. Uh, and it was just incredible to see the cooperation and how quickly they put this together and how quickly they were able to render aid to people. Um, I can't tell you how proud I am of the officers for being able to engage this guy as quickly as they did because we had thousands of people there in a very small area and, you know, it could have gone so much worse, so so fast and so i'm really proud that they got there as quickly as they did and that they were successful in in taking the threat uh, out of the equation we do have um three people deceased confirmed deceased we have one was a six-year-old uh six-year-old male victim 
We also had a 13-year-old female victim, and then we had uh, another male victim in his 20s. We don't have a motive for the shooting as yet. We did have reports of a potential second suspect. We don't have any confirmation that any second suspect did any shooting, um, but we certainly are investigating all leads to try to determine uh, who that potential second suspect is and what exactly that person's role was. We found out, uh, you know, some of the federal agencies helping us out we found out that the rifle that this suspect used was an SKS. It was a AK-47 type assault rifle. Uh, it was purchased legally in the state of Nevada on July the 9th of this year. And reports have been going out of potential suspect. And I will confirm that the suspect is the person uh, that several news media have been inquiring about, Santino William Logan, who is 19 years old. Uh, and I say that name with some hesitation because I don't believe that somebody like this deserves the notoriety or the recognition, but I also understand that you all, you know, want to have some confirmation of that. I think the last thing I'll say before I, I turn it over, um, I want to thank all of the agencies and all of the people that came to help. Uh, I, I don't even know how many people, but there was a lot. Uh, and when we put out the call for help, they came. Uh, because it's such a large crime scene, the FBI has come in uh, and offered some assistance, and we've accepted that assistance because of the size of the area that we need to cover. And so before we open it up for questions, I'm going to uh, have them come up and talk a little bit about their role and how they're helping us with this case. And then I'll okay, so I, I, um, sorry. I, walked, I uh, watched that part of it already, the uh, FBI guy. It's kind of, he doesn't, there's nothing new. He just says the, the same old, same old. And the uh, questions, there's nothing, nothing really that we learned in the questioning. So... Who is this guy? Let's just look. There's some some other details put on the record. He he is identified as being Italian and Iranian, according to his one of these uh, his Instagram post. Italian and Iranian posted on Instagram before the shooting. Um, he said, "Quote Ah, garlic festival time. Come get wasted on overpriced shit." And then one of his friends says, when you get too wasted and accidentally shoot up the festival. Hmm. That's uh, pretty heavy, right? So he's a... Um, <laughs> Legan also... Legan, that's his name, also posted about a fringe white supremacist book posted in 1890. Noted individualist, arch anarchist, uh, revisionist, historian, and Holocaust denier... James uh, J. Martin called the book, quote, one of the most insidious works ever to be published anywhere. Uh, so they're trying to whip him into a white supremacist, but he shot white people. That's not what white supremacists do. They, they target, right? So, but uh, what the hell? Just throw it in for the hell of it. Legan, uh, Legan quoted from the book in a past uh, accompanied by a Smokey the Bear sign about fire danger, he wrote, quote, Read might is uh, read might is right by Wagner Redbeard. Oh, I'm sorry. Read might is right. That's the name of the book by Ragnar Redbreed Beard. <laughs> Ragnar Redbeard. Uh, why overcrowd towns and pave more open space to make ro more room for hordes of mezdizos? And Silicon Valley white tarts. Twats, I'm sorry. Twat. <laughs> Got twats wrong. So, so that's all. I mean, there's some other shit about it. His, his uh, grandfather was Ali Abi Acha Macha Mika Hacha Yaya. Ali Ashka Gafacha Hacha. Was his grandmother from Iran. He was a scholar. He went to UCLA. 
He apparently lived, according to the cop, he lived in, he was living in California with his parents. Uh, living down in the basement somewhere. His parents, he's from Nevada. He's actually from Gilroy, but he spent some time in Nevada. So he's drifting. There's no, there was no notable criminal record, no military service. They didn't point to any extended periods of time away from home. No psychiatric, uh, you know, stuff. Nothing like that. There's nothing. It's just a kid who, you know, snaps, right? His, who's this? His father or somebody, brother was a PAL boxer, 65 fights. Um, grandfather was a, was Tom Legan, a Korean, was a captain in Korea as a nuclear weapons officer. Hmm. What else? So that's, that's really it. It's one of his, his father, his father was a track and field runner. So it seems like an outstanding kind of guy, you know, this is his car. Right, they went to his house, they issued search warrants, they went to his, his home. Taking some pictures of his car. In front of his house. There's the house, right? They cops swooped in with bags of stuff. There they go, you know, what they like to do. And um he attended uh Satino Legan is a a, a Gilroy native. Uh, and attended Gilroy High School. Legan's family has not commented about the shooting. So Gilroy High School, there might be some information found out there. Here's some guy who claims that. A lot of people stuff. started running towards us, yelling and screaming that there's a guy shooting people. So we all panicked. Well, he's saying 30, 40 shots. The cops, the cops three cops took him, out, took him down with handguns. Interestingly, the cops said that that he opened fire on the police and nobody was hit. <laughs> and then the then with a with a with a you know a, an AK AK whatever kind of rifle, blah 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 machine gun. He didn't hit the cop at all cops at all. That's a little strange, right? And then the cops were able to take him down with handguns. So uh so that's I think that's about it. What's this? That was the same, different angle of him uh, taking on his car. Here's a shot of him walking out with some evidence. I believe they're still in the house at this hour. Then I got all the shit. Looks like a guitar ramp. A couple of bags of stuff. Oh, yeah, look, maybe a, maybe a guitar. Or, it looks like a maybe a gun bag. Cops got a gun bag? It could be their gun bag. Yeah, we don't know. So, what else? What's this? <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> shit. And, um, we already saw this one earlier. All right, so there you go, man. There's some more metadata for you. Some more data, metadata, metadata for you on this, um, uh, FF, what is it? Is it, uh, how do they pro, if it is, how do they program a kid like this to do it, right? How do they get him to, you know, what's the, what's the motive to get him to do it? Of course, we know the motive. The motive is to, to, it, uh, it's a rights grab, right? It's a rights grab. It's a gun rights grab, right? There was apparently metal detectors around the uh, event. I found that out too. I don't know. That's, that's a gray area. They say that, uh, you couldn't get into the festival without going through some sort of metal detection. And apparently the kids cut a, the kid cut a hole in the fence and crawled in. And, uh, you know, people would argue that the metal detectors are actually the, the thing that causes the death because there's nobody else to shoot back. The other thing I'll say about that, since the police got him within a minute, I don't think, I think even if people were armed, there probably would have been about the same amount of casualties once the kid got his gun off. But here's the difference, right? The kid may not have shown up to an open carry area. That's, that's what I always felt. I think that most shooters like this tend to be, you know, cowards. They're basically cowards. They're not going to open, they're not going to walk into a, you know, a whole festival full of, you know, gun slinging people, 
right, law-abiding, gunslinging people and try to open fire and think that he's going to do some damage, right? Here he thinks maybe he didn't, he misplaced where the cops were. He didn't know how many police were in the place. And it turns out he, he, he popped out behind that stage by the band and, bow, there was three cops uh, very, very close. So, but, uh, you know, again, so a, a no-gun zone turns out to be a, uh, could have been way worse if the police weren't there, you know, it could have been a slaughter chamber. But so what, so what is it? Is it a rights grab? Is it a, a kid that just flies off the hinge? Is, is there really some way of programming people to, to, to do so, something like this? Is it actually possible? Is that really, really what we're talking about where it looks like it really happened? I, I don't, I'm not disputing that, that there aren't, uh, bullets weren't flying and a kid was, in fact, uh, that people are dead. And that, you know, but how did, what, what drives them to do it? There is no motive, right? There's no, there's no manifesto. There, well, at least at this time, there's no manifesto. There's no, um, while he was reading some book from the 1800s, that's not, that's not um, inspiring enough. But uh, I don't know. Food for thought. Marcus Conte reporting.